For tonight's homework assignment, make sure you watch, copy each problem, and then write a complete sentence about each one. If the sound is too bad or you're getting too much feedback, just turn the sound down, and I apologize for that. First, I'm going to do is domain. Domain is measured left to right, looking at where it borders on the x-axis, far x-axis from left to right. Looking at negative 6, I'm going to use a rounded bracket because that's an open circle. Down to 3, I'm going to use a square bracket because that's a closed circle. Range is measured from the bottom of the graph to the top, looking at where it borders through the y-axis. Looking at a negative 2, it's going to be a rounded bracket there because that's open circle. Up to 3, it's going to be closed square because it's open or closed. The maximum is the highest part of the graph. If it's not a single point, you got to use square brackets and kind of go to domain where you're going from left to right, seeing where it borders on the x-axis. So that maximum, that high point of that graph, looks like it borders from negative 3 on the x-axis to negative 1 on the x-axis, and I would use square brackets for that. The minimum is a single coordinate, so I would use rounded brackets for that and plot that like a normal coordinate. You would not want to use rounded brackets for that maximum because that would tell me that the maximum is the exact point negative 3, negative 1, and that is not the case. So make sure the maximum minimum is a plateau. Use square brackets measure from left to right on the x-axis. Increasing intervals where going from left to right, graph goes uphill. Decreasing is going from left to right. Right where the graph goes. So it looks like it's going uphill from left to right from a negative 6 on the x-axis up there to negative 3 on the x-axis. I would use a rounded bracket on negative 6 and I would use a square bracket on the negative 3 because it is not an open section there. It's all closed. Decrease interval is where from left to right the graph goes downhill. So it looks like it starts going downhill at negative one on the x-axis all the way to three on the x-axis or three on the x-axis. I would use square brackets on both because there are no open circles in any part there. It's all closed. For the evaluation problems, I'm going to change up a little bit. So instead of uh, finding f of 3, finding out what that value is, 
I'm going to have you go to f of, let's say, f of negative 6. So that means go over to negative 6 on the x-axis, go up or down until you hit that line. So I would hit that negative 6, go down, and then look over there to the right to see uh, the y-axis number, which would be negative 2. For the next problem, I'm going to give you a y value and have you find the x. So for this problem, I'm going to have you find, uh, let's say, where f of x equals, let's say, negative 2. So if f of x equals negative 2, what would x equal? For this problem, instead of going to the negative 6 on the x-axis first, or going to the x-axis, you go to negative 2 on the y-axis, and then you go to the line and then look up and see what the x number is. So it's kind of the opposite. Make sure in this one, if I add an arrow in either direction for infinity, make sure you know those answers too. So I'm going to add an arrow and then go through those answers really quickly. Just make sure for that decrease interval, it would be positive infinity because intervals are measured from left to right and it would not matter that that arrow is going down. So make sure you know those problems. For these problems, a little bit more complex, you're trying to find out where the functions are equal, where they're more or less than each other. I will do these and then try to explain them. Uh, the first one, g of x equals f of x. This one has two spots. I have to make sure I write both coordinates. Where f of x is more than g of x, so that's where the black line is on top of that blue line. It's not touching, can't touch that because it's not more than or equal to. It's just more than, so I will use rounded brackets for that.
and then that one's measured like interval notation, measured from negative 2 on the x-axis to 2 on the up x-axis from left to right. That's where the f line is above the g of x line. Next problem, where the g of x line is less than or equal to, so where the g of x line is below the f of x line. So that one would be also touching because it's less than or equal to, so you'd have to use square brackets. So this one is a little tricky because I left the inequality, I switched it. But this inequality would represent If I switch that to be g of x greater than or equal to f of x, then that would be definitely a little bit trickier because those two sections where the blue line is on top would be on the two outer edges. So you can see the spot where g of x is more than or equal to f of x, border from negative infinity, rounded to negative 2 square, also from 2 square to rounded infinity. Where f of x is less than or equal to 0 is where the f of x line is touching or going below that 0 line. So the 0 line, remember, is the x-axis. Once you find that region that they're asking for, whether it be above or below or touching, make sure you use the right brackets and go to the domain interval notation measure from left to right on the x-axis. So from negative 6 to negative 4 square brackets. For the problem on the right, again, where f of x equals g of x, that's going to be in two locations. Make sure you list them both. Where f of x is more than or equal to g of x, that's where the f of x, the blue line, is on top of and also touching that red line there. So I will indicate this in the green. That is more than or equal to touching or above from negative 5 on the x-axis, the far left of it, all the way to 0 on the x-axis, square bracket. g of x greater than f of x, that's where the red line is on top of but not touching the blue line. So I'd have to use rounded brackets there. I would indicate this area in red. It'd be border from negative infinity. And yes, even though that arrow is going up, 
interval notation measured left to right doesn't matter that it's going up negative infinity to negative five rounded and also from zero on the x-axis zero to infinity to the right where the g of x line is more than zero is where that red line is touching oh, oh not touching where it's above the, the zero line so it looks like from negative four on the x-axis border from left to right though so that would be from negative infinity to negative four i will show you this So where g of x is more than 0, where that red line is above the 0 line would be from negative infinity, even though it's going up, border from negative infinity to negative 4, rounded on the x-axis. For the function test, if you have an input that has more than one output, that makes an automatic not function. The way that looks for points, if you have an X input number, give you two different outputs, that is bad. Just remember, if a point repeats, it's still a function. It's just the point listed twice. So again, as soon as an input has two different outputs, either shown by arrows or in coordinates, is a bad not function. Again, that is the same point to twice. That input still had only one output. The next table is bad. For that four to have two different outputs, that is bad. Just make sure if I flip the table and put the inputs on the bottom and the outputs on the top, don't be faked out. So for this one, I have two different inputs having the same output. That is still good. But if one of those numbers changes, it would be bad.
For a graph, you do the vertical line test. If a vertical line touches the graph in only one place as you move it from left to right, it is a function. That means every input is only one output. If it fails the vertical line test, which means the vertical line touches the graph in two different places at once, that means an input has two different outputs. That would be bad. For points, if you do a vertical line, if two points line up on the same vertical line, that fails the vertical line test. These are some tough algebra problems, but for systems, find a system where they intersect, just that's the point. For writing the equations and check solutions, a little bit harder, and then substitution, a little bit harder even. I'm going to try to do it without talking because my interference, I will try to stand back and explain. I'm here every day at lunch or break if you need help. To write my equation for the blue line, I find the y-intercept, which is negative 2. I connect two points on that line to get a little slope triangle. It looks like every time I run over 1, I go up 3, so that has a slope of 3. So that blue line would be the equation f of x equals 3x minus 2. For my red, it looks like the y-intercept is 3, but for my slope, it looks like every time I go over 1, I'm going down 2, so that's a negative 2 slope. So that red line has an equation of g of x equals negative 2x plus 3. Now to check my solutions, remember x and y, x goes in the x spot, y is f of x or g of x, is y goes in the y spot. So here are checking my solutions. Thank you. 
So you can see when I plug it in, X goes right in the X spot. Everything remains the same. Even the number in front, that slope number 3, stays the same. Only X changes. That negative 2 stays the same. Only that X changes. Hopefully your negative rules are pretty good. Here is substitution where I replace G of X and F of X with Y. Remember, once you have one of the equations solved for either x or y, that variable by itself tells you where in the other equation you're substituting. What it's equal to shows you what you're taking and plugging in there. So you can see that where y, y in the other equation where I substitute, what goes in there? The 3x minus 2. So you can see where I replace in red where that y used to be, I put that 3x minus 2. The, everything else remained the same. The negative 2x and the 3 all stayed the same. Next are two steps. Solving a, a equation a variable on both sides of the equation. Here we go. So for substitution, you can see you substitute in, and then you do the algebra to solve for that variable. So I'm solving for x, starting by adding 2 to both sides. That gets rid of that 2 on the left. 3 plus 2 gives me 5 on the right. Sorry, I had to shift that up to the top so I had more room. My next step is to get rid of that negative 2x by doing the opposite, which is adding 2x to both sides. Gives me 5x equals 5. Last step, dividing both sides by 5 gives me x equals 1. The last step is to plug in that 1 for x into either equation to find out what y is. So when I plug that in, y equals 3 times 1 minus 2 gives me y equals 3 minus 2, which is 1. Take those and put them back into a coordinate form, which is a solution, which shows me 1, 1. There it is. Last page. For these ones, the key, you need to make sure you have the right equations and then make sure you're combining right terms and then knowing how to graph. So these are pretty difficult. Again, I'm here every day at lunch or break to help you.
So for my blue line, I got y intercept of 2, slope of over 1, up 1, and slope of 1. That's f of x equals 1x plus 2. My red line is g of x equals negative 2x minus 4. Negative 4 is my y intercept. And then connecting two points, I get a slope of 1 down 2, so negative 2. So g of x equals negative 2x minus 4. First, first problem has me just simply solve the system, so I'm going to write it in coordinate form. Don't miss these problems because you are not reading the graph properly. That is negative 2, 0, not 0, negative 2. The last one, h of x, plug both lines in, combine like terms, and then graph that new equation. When I combine those like terms, I'm going to combine the 1x and the negative 2x. That's going to combine to give me negative 1x. And I'm going to combine 2 and negative 4. That's going to combine to give me negative 2. I have to know my negative rules. So my new equation for y of x will be negative 1x minus 2. When I graph that new equation, I'm going to have a y-intercept of negative 2 and a slope of negative 1 over 1 down 1. So here it is in black. Make sure you label the h of x line there. So h of x is negative 1x minus 2, a y-intercept of negative 2, and a slope of over 1, down 1, negative 1. For the last one, find the equation of that blue line, which is f of x. So it looks like the y-intercept is like the run is 2 and the rise is 1, make sure you write that in the right way. That is a slope of 1 half, not a slope of 2. So here we go. I'm going to substitute this into f of x. The only thing that's going to change is that 2 is going to combine with that negative 4. The 1 half x will stay the same. And then I need to graph that new line. I do see my mistake now. I do see that the y-intercept for that blue line is really 1 instead of 2. So I will go ahead and fix that. 
I noticed that when I was looking at my horizontal shift there, my line goes down only by three, and that was a mistake. It should have really went down by four, so I will fix that. Just shows a mistake you gotta watch out for. You gotta get that equation right to get these problems right. Just know again, you guys are smart enough to do all of this math. I'm here every day at lunch or break to help you. Good luck.